Hello, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this session to learn about migrating to AWS and modernizing all using Docker command line interface, thereby producing a consistent developer experience. I am Anuj Sharma, and I'm a senior specialist solution architect here at Amazon Web Services based out of Seattle. I have over 15 years of hands-on experience in application and infrastructure development and really passionate about building large scalable solutions for developers and enterprise customers. I have won multiple hats ranging from software developer, architect, engineering manager, product manager in variety of industries ranging from financial services to retail. When not building with customers and partners, I love to spend time with my 3D, three years old daughter and running behind her indoors and, and outdoors whenever Seattle weather permits. You can always reach me out at Anuj Sharma 5 Twitter handle. Let's review today's uh, agenda. We will first have a quick review of what Docker is and its architecture so that we all are on the same page and then dive into the specifics of Docker Compose and talk about uh, Docker Compose Amazon ECS integration. During the talk, we will see what are the practical use cases that are solved by using Docker Compose on ECS. We will see a demo and a code walkthrough of running a three-tier application locally using Docker Compose and then seamlessly migrate it to AWS all without needing to learn any new technology other than Docker Compose CLI that you may already be using to power up your local development environment. We have lots to cover in the talk today, so let's get going right away. Docker Compose is a command line tool that uses a, spe a specially formatted descriptor file to take multiple containers and assemble them into applications, which can then run on a single host. The application's services are configured using YAML files. It allows developers to run commands on, the, uh, on, on several containers at the same time. This means that developers can write a YAML configuration file for their application services and subsequently use just one command line uh, to start the entire application end to end, uh, which could consist of several containers. Originally developed for Linux, this tool is now available for most of the operating system using uh, or including Windows and Mac OS. Now you may wonder why would why would developers use Docker Compose? Firstly, for a background, it is one of the most popular tools uh, already used by the developer community. There are around 43,000 repositories in GitHub public and growing every day uh, with over a million uh, Docker Compose files. It is now an open source project uh, with a strong community support. Second biggest benefit is its huge portability. The, the command docker compose up is alone is enough to bring a whole development environment, which can be then turned down by utilizing docker compose down command. This means developers can centralize their development environments and deploy applications effortlessly. Thirdly, testing in the form of unit and end-to-end -end test is one of the docker compose uh, CLI's main features or I would say main benefits. It allows for convenient and repeatable testing without mandating a change in the environment. It makes it possible to run an environment very similar to production circumstances instead of having to test the application on a local host or a local operating system. Docker Compose can accommodate several isolated environments on a single host, allowing developers to rely on the uh, allowing developers to rely on the same machine to run multiple copies of a given environment. Using Docker Compose also means that they don't need to take the risk of having different services and project interfere with one another. Now, as we saw earlier, it's the Docker daemon running on uh, in the in the Docker engine, which is responsible for creating objects. For a typical application to run anywhere, it will need volumes, secret, networks, and images at least. A container is a runtime runtime uh, is is a runnable uh, instance of an image. Docker volume are the preferred mechanism for persisting data generated by and used by Docker containers. Docker network is one, uh, one 
Docker network is how one service will communicate with uh, with another. In in local machine, it's it's usually DNS. Uh, Docker secrets uh, is the mechanism to store uh, the so uh, store the secrets locally. Secrets are mounted uh, onto a specific location uh, runtime in the container. Now, uh, running a three-tier application includes running a front, or typically can include uh, running a front-end layer, which could be an Nginx server or a Node.js server or an Angular application, which interacts with the middle tier, which could be a Python Flask application or your uh, Java application, and a database tier, which could be MySQL server. Each tier needs its own Docker object, uh, communicating with each other using networking of some form. This complexity grows, grows with your application and number of objects keep growing with your application. There comes Docker Compose to rescue, where you declare the application objects in a YAML file. You then use Docker Compose command, uh, Docker Compose up command, which directs the Docker daemon to look for the Compose YAML file and create all the necessary objects uh, for each tier of the application including the networking so that uh, one application can communicate with uh, another one. Now let's do the math. Uh, a simple three-tier application has roughly around four objects each, um, overall requiring to create around 12 objects, and Docker some Compose solved it by creating a Docker Compose YAML file. However, if we had to take this application to AWS Cloud as an example, it will be a, a complex uh, uh, application and a complex setup to run, which will require us to write around 800 lines of CloudFormation templates with around 50 different AWS resources with its own configuration, which not to mention is not the Docker Compose file, which developers begin coding with and use it locally. But now, with Docker Compose uh, ECS uh, integration, this, this problem can be solved pretty seamlessly. With the same com uh, Docker Compose files, you can now deploy the same application into Amazon ECS without any additional work. When running the same uh, Docker Compose up commands against ECS context, the, the, the same Compose file will generate EFS for volumes, run containers in ECS Fargate, use AWS Secret Manager for Docker secrets, generate uh, security groups with bare minimum groups, use AWS Cloud Map for service-to-service -service communication, uh, create application or network load balancer for, for services ingressing into the ECS services. For ECS context, Docker Compose command first runs a transform internally to convert the Docker Compose specs and generate a, an, an AWS CloudFormation template, which is further deployed to, or which is further sent to the CloudFormation engine to create uh, the necessary AWS resources. The, the, the opinionated CloudFormation templates uh, uh, very well conform to the well-architected principles. Here is a design overview of the opinionated architecture that Docker Compose CLI creates on AWS using the, the generated CloudFormation templates. Volumes in Compose spec are mapped to Amazon Elastic file system for persistent storage, and this file system is mounted to the uh, service-specific container. Service-specific container runs on AWS Fargate task on ECS, and the service is exposed using an application load balancer. The secrets required to pull the image from Docker Hub are stored in uh, AWS Secrets Manager. If your application requires a Docker secret, it is also created in AWS Secret Man Secrets Manager seamlessly by the Compose CLI itself so that your application on AWS can use it directly as a secure file mounted onto the container. Service discovery is achieved using AWS Cloud Map so that one service instance knows how to call the other service using a name. Communication from one service to another and, um, and, and external traffic ingress is, uh, is firewalled using uh, security groups. 
Before we go on to the demo, let's see some of the use cases which this integration can solve. Firstly, it's likely for running multiple containers in an application. Developers are already using Docker Compose to power their local development environment and may be using Docker Swarm to orchestrate their workloads in, in, in uh, uh, your data centers. There are customers who are looking forward to migrate uh, uh, workloads to AWS Cloud using, and just because of the simplicity of ECS Fargate for container orchestration. There are customers who are concerned about developer productivity and developer experience during the entire migration journey. Uh, and lastly, customers uh, want to orchestrate multi-application end-to-end uh, in their CI/CD pipelines, and that that forms a great use case of using the the, the Docker Compose um, uh, ECS integration. Now, let me take you to the to take you to the code and the entire journey uh, of a user. All right, let's talk about the, the, the sample application. It is a three-tier application with backend database and a front-end tier. The front-end tier has a Docker file with Nginx Alpine image, which copies the, the, the conf file. Uh, the conf file listens to uh, port 3000 and proxies to uh, the backend, which runs on port 5000. The backend is a Python Flask application uh, from an application perspective, it has three different routes. The first route is uh, at the slash, which does nothing but connects to the database and retrieves the record. The second route is add uh, with a specific ID and a name. Um, and in order to connect to the database, we use the the, the password file, which is mounted to uh, mounted to a specific uh, uh, path when the container runs. Uh, we also use the environment we're able to see the location of the file, um, otherwise default, and similarly uh, look at the database host and the user for uh, for the for for getting to know which database to connect, what is the host and user and whatnot. The, the backend is a MySQL database, uh, and we don't have a Docker file for that because we are going to simply fetch it from uh, Docker Hub. The Docker Compose file, we in, in this Compose file, we create volumes named as DB data. We create secrets named as DB password. And when we are doing the local development, we want to mount the a specific file which is present inside the DB folder. Uh, and that's pretty much for the local development purposes when we are fetching the images uh, from the Docker Hub. Um, and this specific password file is mounted uh, onto a specific um, a location when the, the container runs. Uh, and the networks, which is the backend network and the frontend network. Um, from the services standpoint, we create three different services, uh, frontend, uh, backend, and the database. The frontend service has a depends on uh, 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 property pass, which makes sure that the service starts when the backend uh, service gets initiated. And similarly for the backend service, we want to make sure that it starts when the database gets started first. So that is how we are creating a dependency chain using the depends on uh, attribute. We are also mounting the secrets here um, in the build. Uh, uh, I mean, we are also mounting the secrets using the secrets uh, spec. Um, for the backend, we are mounting the DB password uh, secret that we created. And we are doing the build. Uh, so in, when, when we are running the application locally, we want to do the application build, uh, which is why we want the uh, context essentially build, uh, which has the location of the Docker file specified. So the front end, we are using the Docker file present in the front end fo folder. And for back end, we want to use the back end file uh, uh, the Docker file, which is present in the doc, uh, in in the respective folder. So that's pretty much an overview on the sample application. Now let's get to the fun part of uh, running the application and deploying it. So in order to run the application locally, I can use Docker Compose up command. Uh, 
and that will start the application um, uh, locally uh, and basically it will create all the necessary components which are required to initiate the application locally. Once the application gets started, you can access the application using curl, HTTP, uh, localhost, uh, localhost on port uh, 5000. All right, so this application is created. Oops, I don't think it's running on 5000. Let's run it on port 3000. Yes, uh, it's running on port 3000. Um, just to add more uh, uh, routes here uh, and more data to the to the database that we just created, add to give it my name here. Uh, add uh, three, give it some other name and oops and three yeah that's it and simply fetch the records just to see everything is looking good yeah so that's that's how the application looks like once you are satisfied with the development and once you are satisfied with the testing you can just run docker uh, compose down command which will tear, tear down the entire environment that we just created so the next step uh, now I'm happy with my application locally. I want to deploy into uh, into Amazon and specifically use this, the integration that we have created using uh, Docker Compose CLI. Uh, and in order to do that, I will demonstrate this with a, uh, with Docker Compose overlays. Uh, and in uh, when, when I say Docker Compose overlays, what it means is, as an example, when uh, when the application is deployed onto EKS, we cannot do the build uh, when the service is getting created. Instead, we want to fetch the images from Docker Hub, which is why we will overlay this specific attribute. Uh, instead of building locally, we want to fetch it from a specific location. Now, in order to fetch it from uh, Docker Hub, we may need to pass on the credentials also. And in order to create the credentials, uh, we create a file, um, call it like Docker pull uh, secrets, which has my username and password um, in order to connect to Docker Hub. We are not going to push this file anywhere. We are not going to send this file to anywhere. Instead, what we will do is um, uh, leverage the Docker Compose integration that we have created and create these secrets into AWS Secrets Manager. But before we do that, the very next step is to uh, create a connection from local environment to uh, uh, to Amazon uh, uh, so that it, the, the application can be deployed seamlessly. In order to do that, uh, the first step is to create the context. Uh, so currently, I don't have any context uh, other than the default context. And now I'm going to uh, create a context using Docker context, create ECS and give it a name like ECS demo. You'll be presented with three different options. I will select uh, AWS environment variables uh, as my environment uh, variables uh, are stored. I mean, as the, the secrets to connect to AWS are stored in environment variable. Once that is created, the, the next step is to create the secrets uh, so that um, when when the the services gets created and it want to fetch the images, it uses the secrets securely stored in AWS the Secrets Manager. And in order to do that, uh, we can use Docker Secrets command. And let me uh, uh, pull that command real quick. Okay, so now we will execute the uh, secret. And before even we do that, we need to switch the context so that it 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 it, uh, it switches to the ECS hyphen demo context that we created. And we can use Docker context, uh, use ECS hyphen demo. Uh, that will switch to the context. And you can inspect the context using Docker context ls uh, command um, uh, and Docker context inspect. Command and that will show uh, that will make sure that you are in the current uh, correct uh, context. Now the next step is to create the secrets uh, in, in Secrets Manager, and in order to do that, we will use uh, we will use Docker create secret uh, command, and we will give the secret name as uh, pull credentials and uh, push it to ECS. Now you'll see that we are not interacting or using AWS CLI. What we are using is Docker secret uh, and using is Docker commands, nothing other than a Docker CLI. 
And if you see want to see the out output, you can use uh, Eco here. That will show you the ARN specifically that we want to uh, create. Now, uh, uh, the next step comes is to deploy the entire application into um, ECS. And in order to do that, uh, we will use the Docker com uh, compose up commands. And as we are using, um, and you'll notice that as we have switched to uh, switched to using the ECS context, um, it, it, uh, it, it's pretty seamless to uh, to deploy the entire application with the entire with the with the specific uh, environment variables that we just create here. Uh, before we go ahead and deploy that application, we want to talk about docker uh, compose convert command. Uh, and we'll pipe the output to, let's say, foo.yaml. What this convert command is going to do is generate the entire CloudFormation template, uh, which will be used further to deploy to, um, uh, to the specific AWS account. And what you'll notice is it generated around 700 uh, plus lines of code uh, of 700 lines of CloudFormation templates, um, simply reusing the compose file that we created. And now uh, this this opinionated architecture will be deployed further to uh, uh, to to your uh, AWS accounts. And now changing the convert command, uh, we'll do Docker compose up. Uh, now what is happening is uh, the the very first step behind the scenes is uh, doing the conversion process and uh, converting the the Docker spec into AWS CloudFormation. And once the CloudFormation templates are generated, it is deploying into uh, my AWS account. I'm going to take a pause and resume once the deployment is complete. All right, so now the, the, uh, the, the stack and all the resources are in create complete status. You can uh, also open the CloudFormation console just to verify everything is looking good. You'll see a stack got created with the, the template uh, that, that was generated using the, the compose convert command. Uh, you can go to the Elastic Container Service uh, and see there was a cluster that was created with the specific details, and now we have uh, three running tasks in, uh, inside that cluster. We can go to the cloud map and uh, go through the respective uh, DNS entries which were created for service-to-service -service communication and even for service discovery. Uh, when you go to Secrets Manager, you'll notice that we there was this was the secret that we created for which had the pull, pull credentials. But at the same time, the CLI, the Docker Compose CLI, intelligently created another uh, credential um, which is uh, uh, which is used for the backend tier to communicate with the database tier. And finally, you can come to the, the the EC2 console to see the 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 details of the load balancer. Now, another thing is what what we observe in the console. You can also uh, um, do Docker compose ls command to 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 see the the application which is uh, which which was created onto e, uh, ECS. You can do Docker compose ps to see all the resources that were created and all the necessary resources. You can access the application at the specific port at which was, uh, the, which is the load balancer port at uh, uh, node 3000. Uh, you can also do Docker compose logs. Uh, now this is a pretty cool feature in my opinion, as in, uh, as because you don't have to actually do the context switching. Um, ideal speaking, you don't have to even go to the AWS console, uh, but you can do pretty much all the operations here. Uh, when you do Docker Compose logs, the the logs are streamed directly from Amazon uh, ECS uh, onto your uh, onto your console. And you can see the, the the service logs, which for which is for the database tier. Uh, you'll see the logs for the backend tier as well as from for the for the frontend tier. 
with this, uh, we can say that we, we lifted the application and shifted onto AWS. Now the next step comes is uh, uh, now you have moved the application uh, you to, to ECS, and now it is the time to think about doing some optimization and some modernization. And again, um, you can use the, the Compose uh, CLI and uh, specifically use the Docker Compose overlays uh, to add more capabilities. Uh, as an example, you may want to take the benefit of auto scaling uh, and scale the instances up and down based on the the CPU threshold. You can um, uh, you can add for the backend service uh, use the use two replicas, add some specific capabilities, and add auto scaling uh, so that the services uh, scale up when whenever the CPU threshold uh, goes above seventy five percent. Uh, this is the minimum and maximum uh, number of tasks for the specific backend service. Uh, with 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 this specific few um, optimizations, you can start modernizing your application uh, gradually. Uh, first one being taking the advantage of uh, auto scaling in cloud, and the next one is uh, as an example in this uh, case, we 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 so far were using the the idea the 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 database in container. Now when uh, you, you can think about uh, taking the advantages of the cloud and taking use of the managed services of the cloud. You can even uh, start using um, Amazon RDS um, and seamlessly change your application uh, and seamlessly apply a specific overlay file uh, to, to change the application uh, uh, by using environment variable and point to the new database that we just created with the previous uh, steps. Uh, now, when I say the previous steps, I want to show also another extension, which is X CloudFormation Console. Now, because of any reason, if you realize that there are few resources which are not natively available and not natively baked into uh, the, the Compose CLI, you can use the AWS uh, uh, CloudFormation plugin um, for Docker Compose application and uh, uh, and write your specific CloudFormation templates also. And in this case, we are creating the MySQL database and applying as a overlay file uh, so that it can be used uh, 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 to, to cut over the database when the database has been created. All right, so with that, um, uh, I will wrap up my demo and uh, time for quick next steps. So AWS partnered with uh, Docker to create a self-paced workshop, which is now live available at docker.awsworkshop.io. All the code base that we reviewed today in this session is also available in the workshop along with the entire instructions end to end. Uh, uh, please identify the specific business units of your organizations whose use cases are pretty similar to what we discussed today and see those uh, 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 challenges can be solved by using this uh, specific integration. Yeah, I would recommend developing a, 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 a champion within the organization who can evaluate, uh, pioneer, and even evangelize the use of this tool internally. Uh, and most importantly, uh, give us a feedback uh, at, at the, the, the cop, uh, compose hyphen CLI slash uh, issues. Let us know uh, if this integration does not work for you. Uh, and if it works, again, let us know. Uh, Docker and AWS are both customer obsessed and we need your feedback to develop the product further. We want to hear from you all, the customers to make this product better. Uh, reach us out on this link if you need a, uh, a custom hands-on workshop to be run within within your your organization. And that's uh, that's a wrap. Um, thank you all for uh, coming today and joining this session. I hope you find it useful and and looking forward uh, to hear more from you on all the amazing things that you can build with this specific integration. Thank you once again.